Hi guys, Matt from Howtech here, and today on Technically Speaking, we're going to be putting some heat in the motor, and we're talking about fuels. Petrol, gasoline, alcohol, ethanol, octane, additives. We're gonna to touch on it all. So let's get into it. Now we've talked on other episodes in detail on the combustion process and how things like air fuel ratio and ignition timing affect engine horsepower output and engine longevity. But in this episode of Technically Speaking, we're going to talk about different types of fuel that we use in our internal combustion engines, the effects that these fuel have on power, and how we might adjust an engine's tune-up based on the specific fuel being used. But before we get too deep into the weeds here, we need to get some terminology squared away. Now, probably the most common piece of fuel information that most people have heard of is octane rating. So there's a couple of ways of measuring the octane of a fuel, whether it be the RON, which stands for the research octane number, or the MON, which stands for the motor octane number. And as a side note, we could actually probably spend hours just discussing the differences in these two numbers and why RON is always higher than MON and all that sort of stuff. But for now, we really just need to know that octane is a measure of a fuel's resistance to detonation. The higher the octane rating, the less likely the fuel is to detonate at any given temperature and pressure. We want to talk about alcohol fuels too. The two most common of these are ethanol and methanol. And while these two different fuels have similar names, chemically, they're actually quite different. So in short, ethanol's got twice as many carbon atoms as methanol in its chemical makeup. But realistically, that's also not important to this conversation. The important thing is that methanol and ethanol are both alcohol fuels. So they're similar in some senses, but they're also very, very different. And then of course we have gasoline or petroleum based fuels, or as we say here in Australia, petrol. So with that background terminology out of the way, let's talk first about gasoline. So gasoline or petroleum based liquid fuels are what you find at just about every pump across the globe. Bingo and hot fuel. And for the most part, these fuels come in both a standard and a high octane blend. And with the high octane varieties, they'll cost you a few cents a litre or gallon more than the lower octane counterparts. So what's the actual difference between the lower octane and the higher octane fuels at the pump? And more importantly, which should you use in your engine? So there's two answers to this question. There's the overwhelmingly simple answer and probably the overwhelmingly complex one. So I'll start with the simple. The difference is on the label. It's the octane rating. The complex answer is wrapped up in how that fuel arrives at this increased octane rating. And that one is dependent on a whole lot of factors. You know, the base oil stock that was pulled out of the ground. There's the refining process, the additives, and even the location that the end product ends up at. But that's kind of all a conversation for someone smarter than me and for another day. What's actually important to know is what that octane rating is. And that is, like I said, simply a measure of the fuel's ability to resist detonation at a given temperature and pressure. All right, so how is this information at all practical? Well, when we're building an engine, the higher the compression ratio the engine is, the more pressure is built up in the combustion chamber on the compression stroke. Now, eventually, if we can increase the compression ratio enough, we're gonna build up so much cylinder pressure that the air and fuel inside the combustion chamber reach their auto-ignition temperature and pressure. That's detonation. That happens either just prior to or just after the spark plug fires. We have a couple of previous technically speaking videos covering the topic of detonation in more detail. If you're interested in going deep on that topic, then you can watch those videos. But for now, the important detail to know is that cheaper, lower octane fuels reach their detonation point at a lower temperature and pressure than their high octane counterparts. But what does that mean in the real world? It means that the higher the compression ratio your engine runs, the higher octane fuel that you will need to run to keep up with it. And the same rule applies to turbocharging or supercharging. Because turbos and superchargers increase the air pressure in the intake manifold, and therefore 
the pressure inside the combustion chamber, the more boost you're running, the higher the octane fuel that you will need to run to prevent detonation. All right, but what happens if you've got like a relatively low compression ratio naturally aspirated engine? Maybe it's your daily driver. Is there any benefit to running a high octane fuel? And truthfully, the answer to that is no. If an 87 octane fuel is not reaching its detonation point in any of the operating conditions of your engine, the only performance gain that will be made by running a high octane pump fuel in that engine is the performance of the fuel company's stock price. So here's a practical tip for you as well. When you book a trip to the dyno to have your car tuned, make sure that you fill the tank with whatever fuel you're going to run consistently in the car. There is absolutely no use going to the dyno with your own custom blend of 98 moonshine and rocket fuel octane boosters if you can't get this fuel again, because the guy tuning your engine is going to tune it to the fuel that's in the tank. If you turn around the next day and you put whatever low dollar sludge you can find into the tank, then the chances are the engine is going to ping itself to its own early death, because that's not the fuel the engine was tuned for. Now before you ask, I know what you're going to say. What happens if I have my car tuned on 98 or 95 and I religiously use that fuel but sometimes when I travel out of town I just can't get it? What do I do then? Well, luckily a tank or two of lower octane fuel is not going to cause the con rods to escape out the side of the block. If you can't get high enough octane fuels, just fill the tank with what you can and drive accordingly. So no limiter banging, no hitting boost cut, no racing your mates in Mexico if you cannot get the quality of fuel that your engine has been tuned for. Now, if you're thinking, oh Matt, that's all too hard when Hector wants to race me for the slips, I gotta race, brah! I only race for pink slips. Well, you do have options. There's nothing stopping you setting up dual maps or an ignition trim in your Haltech ECU that will allow you to switch between ignition timing or boost maps on low and high octane fuels. Now, these are all options you have. What you do with them, that's up to you. So, what about these petroleum-based fuels that have ethanol mixed with them? Fuels like E10. They're cheap, but they have a slightly higher octane rating than the other cheap fuels. And the reason for this is the ethanol content. That's what the 10 stands for in E10. 10% of the fuel is actually ethanol. Now, as I mentioned before, ethanol is an alcohol-based fuel and for the most part is likely being manufactured using either sugar from cane or corn. And the great thing about these alcohol-based fuels is they've got a really high octane rating, in excess of 110 octane for ethanol. So mixing just 10% of ethanol into a cheap petroleum-based fuel will often bump the octane rating up two or three points. So what about E85 or fuels that are 85% ethanol and only 15% petroleum? Are these fuels really over 110 octane? Well, the short answer to that is yes. But that's not the only benefit of running E85. Now because E85 has a different stoichiometric air to fuel ratio to petrol or gasoline, we actually need to provide the engine with roughly 30% more E85 to meet the same stoichiometric air fuel ratio that we have on petrol. Now that's important for two reasons. First, we can't just fill up any old vehicle with E85 and expect the engine to run correctly. If you want to run E85, the ECU will need to be programmed to suit. Now, fortunately, that's really easy with all modern Haltech ECUs. And with the help of one of these nifty little flex fuel sensors, it's almost completely seamless. Secondly, that extra fuel that we add to the intake actually starts to have a significant cooling effect on the incoming airstream. Now, what this means for turbocharged or supercharged engines is not only does E85 have a really high resistance to knock, but it also cools the incoming air. It's a bit like a mini intercooler. So E85 is a big win for engines, but it's bad news for corn on the cob. Now, no discussion on alcohol fuels would be complete without talking about the big daddy of alcohol race fuels. Only pussies run nitro meth. Methanol. Now, just like ethanol, methanol is an alcohol, but methanol only has a single carbon atom on its carbon backbone. For what it's worth, ethanol has two carbon atoms on its carbon backbone. Again, that's not really important to the discussion. What is important 
with this discussion is the octane rating. And with methanol, it's almost too high to measure which is exactly why when you want to run 120 PSI of boost and 11,000 RPM in your fire-breathing drag car, the only fuel you even attempt to run is methanol. So methanol fuels have a stoichiometric air-to-fuel ratio of around 6.5 to 1, which in round terms means that we need to run twice as much methanol than we would gasoline to maintain the same chemical relationship of air and fuel in an engine. All that extra fuel means more cooling of the intake charge and cooler air is more dense air and more dense air equals more horsepower. So why aren't we all just running methanol in our daily drivers and ripping around in 3000 horsepower pro mods? Well, we could, but while methanol is a great race fuel, it's also a great solvent and it reacts with lots of organic compounds, things like rubbers, seals, alloys of aluminium, they can all be damaged by methanol. So methanol racers know this and they take really good care to flush out their fuel line, clean their fuel injectors regularly. They replace their fuel filters all the time. And they do this stuff on a regular basis. So while methanol is a really fantastic fuel for going fast, it's kind of a lot of upkeep and maintenance. So there we go. We have three different fuels we put into our engines, all with different uses. If you've got more questions about this, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. I'm Matt from Haltech and I'll see you next time.